Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Systems and Workflow Magic Podcast. I am your Systems and Workflow BFF and guide, Dolly DeLong. And today, I am so honored to have a new friend on the podcast today. I want to give a warm welcome to Ash Chow, who is a launch strategist and a conversion copywriter who helps high integrity experts and coaches develop a deeply human strategy for their content and launches that create a powerful emotional connection while also this is the best part while also skyrocketing their visibility and bank account I love that. So Ash, welcome to the podcast. It's so fun to meet you finally and get to connect with you both on this podcast and on YouTube as well. Hi, Dolly. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very, very excited to be here. Well, I, I'm just thrilled to have you on. And I know I just gave a little introduction about you, but do you mind sharing with my audience a little bit more about you? I didn't mention this, but audience, Ash and I are meeting at 7 p.m. my time, and I don't even know what time it is for you, but you are in a totally different area of the world. Yes, yes. So I'm based in um, Melbourne, Australia. So thankfully, it's like 11 a.m. my time. But I think what you just said reminded me of just how you know lucky we are as like online business owners to be able to like network and meet and you know become friends with so yes. many different business owners and clients from all around the world. You know, I've been super privileged to be able to like work with clients in like the U.S. or U.K even while I'm, you know, like down under in Melbourne, Australia. And it's been, I think the internet, as much as it has its cons, has definitely opened up. Like, you know, it's given us like a borderless business, which I so appreciate. Yeah, I I love how you formulated that. Like, even though it has its cons, it ha- like it has so many advantages and it definitely has helped connect me with so many people from all over the world. So I just want to say again, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the podcast and the YouTube channel. And I'm pumped to have you on. And I know, um, like Ash, I know you have such amazing things to add to this this launching series that I am hosting currently. And I'm really, really excited um, to bring your expertise to my audience. Okay. So Ash, I am selfishly excited that you are on the podcast for so many reasons, and you have very extensive knowledge about launching, and I know that my audience is going to love what you're going to talk about. I mean, I am going to be most likely taking notes too. I I shared with you that like right before we hit record. Um, But for those of you who are brand new to the systems and workflow magic podcast or YouTube, I am the middle of a series centered around the topic of strategic launching. So what launching is, why it's important and how to apply it to your own creative business. And Ash is going to be talking about the topic of how to power up your pre-launch. And so so if you feel like, oh, this is too um, like advanced for me, no, like I want to encourage you, the listener or the viewer to take lots of notes and to like listen in because this could apply to something, a service that you already do and or a digital product that you are creating or revamping. So please listen up. And this could apply to you the next season of business you're in. So either way, Ash has a lot of cool nuggets of wisdom to share. And I do want to share like while the open part period is when money is made, and this is vital for any type of launch. I myself have only launched four times and I'm learning more and more about the majority of the heavy lifting um, before the cart even opens up. And this is like what the heavy lifting happens during that pre-launch period. And so this is what Ash is going to be diving into. This is how to power up your pre-launch. So I'm kind of like setting this up for you, Ash, and I'm so excited for you to take it away. Thank you so much, Dolly, for such a great introduction. And yet you're 100% correct. So as a you know launch strategist, I work with a lot of clients and I think most course creators uh, are very, very focused on that 
or open cart period because that is the period when you know you've launched your course and you are hoping that sales are rolling in. So yes, it's super important. But I think what people, most people forget about is that there is a pre-launch phase that is also very important. And so to make sure we're all on the same page, like like the name suggests, the pre-launch phase is that pivotal time period leading up to when you open the doors to your course. And so it can be anywhere from like three months out. Like I know huge course creators like Amy Porterfield, you can start to see them ramping up their pre-launch like two to three months out, or it can even be one month out or even like a week out. It doesn't really matter. Like it's just that time period in the lead up to your launch. And the reason it is so important that you create content during this time is because Right now, I'm willing to bet like the majority of your audience aren't actually ready to buy your mm. course. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, they are just not in that right state of mind because at, at any given moment, like right now, your audience is likely carrying a lot of those deeply rooted beliefs and objections that are really deterring them from understanding why they should learn about the topic you're teaching or really causing them to doubt their own ability to achieve the transformation you're promising them. So if we look at a very practical example, so like let's say you want to launch a YouTube course um, and you want to help people launch their own YouTube channels for their business. But right now, a lot of people either believe YouTube is very saturated Mm -hmm. or um, it's too late for me to grow. Like I don't think I can make space or grow an audience on there right now because it's just so crowded so see how that's like a belief deterring them from wanting to learn more about YouTube or they may be thinking like oh like I want to start a YouTube channel but like I'm not interesting enough and I'm really awkward on camera and like what if no one I don't think anyone wants to like watch my life or listen to what I have to say so those are those beliefs that are really causing them to doubt whether or not they can actually succeed Mm. on YouTube And so then what happens is if you don't create content addressing those beliefs, then what happens is when you launch and you say, hey, my YouTube course is here, what will happen is your audience's beliefs and objections are immediately going to flare up and be top of mind for them, right? So they may like see your announcement or they might jump on your sales page and they'll be like, cool, there's a YouTube course, but oh, like I think YouTube is too saturated and oh, I'm not that interesting and I'm scared of what people are going to think of me, blah, blah, blah. And so it, all those beliefs are really going to convince them out of buying your course. And so they may need to read that sales copy a bunch more times, or they may need to receive more emails and they may not end up buying until a lot later or not at all. And that is why in your pre-launch what you need to be doing is creating content before you even launch so you can prime your audience to be in that right state of mind where they want to learn about your course, they understand why they should learn about it and they understand why they should learn from you and not anyone else. So if there's one thing to take away from this, it's that your pre-launch is so important for priming your audience to be in that right state of mind. That is, I love this because, um, again, like right before we hit record, like I was telling Ash that I was speaking with, um, Emily Conley, who was also on the podcast in previous episodes. Um, and she exactly spoke about the importance of having strategic copy for all the phases of a launch, but especially during that pre-launch phase and it, she literally said the exact same thing. And I think it's like this copywriter magic that you all seem to have like that. They're like, it's so I hope if you're listening or you're watching that you are paying close attention to what Ash is sharing with you, with us. Um, it, you shouldn't just like, again, as fun as it is to be just like, go with the flow with life, And, um, just like let things happen. I strongly, strongly suggest that you don't do that with your launches because you should have some sort of strategy in the pre-launch phase. And that warms up your audience 
tremendously that helps them. Um, like Ash was sharing, like uncover some, maybe they don't understand that these are like, um, what like myths that they're just like going mm. on in their mind. Um, it might be going on in the back of their mind, but it's not at the forefront, but if you help them uncover it, you can help them unravel like these negative mindset. I don't want to call it negative mindset, but just mm. like these like thought patterns that they might have and every single week or leading up to like your specific launch period, you're helping them uncover, like getting closer and closer and closer to the solution, which is your amazing, for example, in Ash's um, example, the amazing YouTube course. So by the way, everyone, I'm not putting out a YouTube course because obviously <laughs> like you're seeing my YouTube channel and you're like, wow, Dolly, you, you really need to work on your editing skills, but you guys one step at a time. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That is exactly right. Not about the YouTube course, but um, you're exactly right about how like, yes, you really want to be identifying what their thought patterns are yeah. and then helping them see a different way. So it's not necessarily that it is what the, that the mindsets they're holding are negative. It's just that they maybe don't know about your unique approach to the solution or why they need to learn about this specific topic that's going to help them achieve their goals. Can I ask you a question really fast? How, how, like from your standpoint, when you are working with your clients, especially like in crafting, like very compelling, um, copy for a launch period, how do you identify your ideal clients thought processes, especially in that pre launch phase? Like, as a listener, I'm sure listeners are like, okay, but how, how do I do that? Yeah, that's a really, really great question. And it is pivotal for creating your launch strategy and your pre-launch strategy. It's very much about understanding what is your audience's current state of mind. And the best way to do that is through research. Practically speaking, it's as simple as like talking to your audience and finding out what they think, feel, and believe about the topic you're teaching. You really want to understand, okay, what are their current challenges they're facing? Um, what is What are the barriers that are stopping them from reaching their goals in this specific area? What do they commonly believe? So very practically, the way copywriters like to do research is we will send out surveys to the audience, um, asking literally those questions, like what challenges do you face when it comes to starting a YouTube channel or starting a podcast? Um, if you And that usually yields a lot of great responses and data in helping me understand these are the beliefs that they hold or these are the challenges they're facing. Now, if you don't have a particularly large or engaged audience that you feel comfortable sending out a survey to what I also love doing is just uh doing a lot of stalking on Facebook groups that the ideal audience is hanging out in seeing what questions they're asking seeing what type of how they're talking about their struggles so that's really helpful and another secret weapon I love is using reddit now Okay. I find Reddit such a gold mine because it is like I get fairly anonymous and people are very, very honest on there <laughs> because it is like fairly anonymous. And so yeah. what I love doing is, for example, I might type in um, like struggling to start a YouTube channel Reddit and then Google will pop up all of these forums where people are talking about those struggles. And then I would read through them and I would usually see what people are saying. They might be saying like, oh, like, the algorithm they might be saying like the algorithm is like against me or like they might say like I really want to do this but I feel like I need to look more professional or I feel like I need to have a better camera first and then so I look at that and I'm like oh okay so see how they have a belief that mm -hmm. in order to succeed they must need better equipment so yeah, very practically speaking, I ask the audience or I do stalking on platforms like Reddit and Facebook, but usually reading through what they say is what helps me identify those beliefs and objections and thought processes that are deterring them from seeing the value of the course we're about to launch. I love that idea. I've actually, I've heard about people utilizing Reddit, but 
to be completely honest, I've never heard anybody explain how to use Reddit before. So you're the first person because I'm actually, um, I think, I mean, obviously I know what Reddit is, but I've never like, like taken the time to Mm. check it out. Um, and I'm like, okay, I need to go into Reddit right after this conversation. And just like what you said, like search in the search bar and type in like, like an example would be maybe like, I'm having trouble with my launching my product Mm. and somebody would, I'm, I'm assuming like a bunch of answers would populate or forums. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, my pro tip is to rather than use the Reddit search bar, cause it's a little iffy. I find best results using Google, Okay. but I would put the word Reddit at the end so that obviously like Reddit search results will come up first. So in your example, it might be, you might type in like, struggle launching a course reddit and see what comes up and then you'll see like a whole bunch of reddit forums populate and you can just click in each one it's a much more effective way than using the reddit search bar itself so there's a pro tip for all your listeners out there okay ash can just like drop the mic now she's like delivered like seriously i've always i've heard this so many times from people either on podcasts or i've heard it like watching other youtube videos and tutorials and i'm like what do they mean by reddit like i know what reddit is but how do they mm. actually utilize it? So this is this is gold. So you all DM Ash and say thank you right after <laughs> this, after you listen to this. Okay, so what you were sharing, like you need to prime your prospects to be in the right state of mind, like especially during the pre-launch. And you do that using Google and Reddit together. Um, so talk to talk to us about, like what most business biz owners get wrong about the pre-launch phase? Yeah, I think this is a very, very great question because I think most course creators have a vague idea that they need a pre-launch, but what mm-hmm. they do is they either neglect it because they have so much to actually juggle for the actual launch, which fair enough, or they think that a pre-launch is just about, you know, okay, all I have to do is create content that add value and build type. And so those are two phrases that I hear a lot when I talk to clients or when I talk to my audience. And while they're technically like, yes, your pre-launch does to some extent need to be about adding value to your audience and building hype for your launch. Like that's not all there is, because if you think about it, like looking at the concept of add value, that in itself is a very, very broad concept because add value means a dozen different things, right? Yeah. You and I can add value by, uh, you know, obviously, obviously providing educational content like this, or providing um, encouragement to our audience, or being funny, uh, being relatable, even being polarizing is adding value in some way. But like, just because you are funny or encouraging doesn't necessarily mean you are helping your audience understand the value of the topic you're about to teach or understand why they need the solution you're about to offer. And it's the same thing with build hype. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, we really want our audience to be excited for our launch, right? Because we want them to to care about the fact that we're opening something up or we want them to, you know, obviously jump on the sales page when it's live and ready. But what is the point of driving all of this traffic onto the sales page if, you know, the moment they get on there, those beliefs and objections that they have are are again going to flare up and make them like jump right off because they've successfully talked themselves out of it. So while adding value and build hype is important, your pre-launch content, your pre-launch strategy needs to be so much more than just those two things. I love that so much. And while you were talking, I was just like furiously typing. Um, I love that you, you merged that so well together like because we had like started talking about the pre-launch about how you need to talk about those limiting beliefs or those um objections that's the word I'm looking for those objections that your clients may have and then you like so perfectly um merged the okay And this is also when you are building hype and there's also, there's this component of adding value and something that 
like I've noticed a lot in the education space is people say this all the time and you've probably heard it over and over, like add value, build hype, like, yes, but you perfectly like bridge that gap in my mind for Mm. my mind. And I'm really excited for my listeners to like get, get that um, puzzle piece like in place in their mind as well. So like, again, if you need to re-listen to this episode, re-watch this episode, go back a few seconds, 30 seconds even, and re-listen to Ash explaining like how you can still build hype, awareness, excitement, and you're still like handling those objections or handling those, like answering those limited belief questions. Like you can do the two at the same time. Mm-hmm. 100%. Like, it, yes, there's add value, there's build hype, keep doing all those things. But there's also, there also needs to be so much more you need to do to get your audience to that crucial right state of mind for your launch. Exactly. And I also love the example you gave. Again, I'm going back to that Reddit example. That was a prime example of of how you can go over that objection. Well, I don't know how to research all of my clients' objections. Like Ash just literally gave us a prime example of how to do that. And then you can build hype like with whatever you answers you find for a particular topic you're looking for. So again, I am definitely going to be Googling this like at the end of this <laughs> conversation because I like am so excited about applying what I just learned. Yes, yes, 100%. So let's talk about how to actually now, like we, we understand all of these foundational phrases, like building hype, building awareness, um, adding value, talking about the objections. Okay. But how do you actually create an intentional pre-launch strategy? Yeah. So basically knowing what we know about pre-launch, that it's all about getting people to that right state of mind in order to create an actual effective pre-launch strategy where you're not just like pumping out content for the sake of it. What you need to do is first, like we talked about, identify what are your prospects' current thoughts and beliefs. So what is their current state of mind? And we basically talked about that before where to do that, you would research, you would ask them, you would go onto platforms like Reddit. So if we used a YouTube example, uh, the current state of mind might be like, oh, I need a better camera before I can start posting consistently on YouTube or like... I feel like YouTube, it's just too late to grow on there. It's so saturated. My videos aren't taking off. Like, I don't I don't think this is the right platform to be on. Or they might be saying things like, I want to, but I'm not interesting enough. No one cares. I don't think anyone will care about what I have to say. I'm so awkward on camera. I have to wait until I have like an aesthetic studio. So maybe like that is their current state of mind. So that's step one. So now once you've identified where they currently are, What you want to do then is identify what is that right state of mind for your course, okay? So what is it that you need your audience to think, believe, and feel in order to feel ready to invest in your course? So in this YouTube example, it might be like, well, in order for someone to want to spend a few hundred to a thousand dollars on a YouTube course, they need to believe that. YouTube is still the best platform to be on for awareness and visibility and leads, right? They need to believe that like YouTube is still going to continue growing. It's still going to continue being the great place to be. So they better get in on it now. They also need to believe that it it doesn't matter what equipment you have and that Mm -hmm. it is better to start off with what you have, whether that's like your smartphone, a hundred dollar camera, a shitty tripod, whatever, right? <laughs> like computer. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. computer, it doesn't matter. Like they just need, you don't need the best equipment. You need to start with what you have. So we mm-hmm. need your audience to believe that. And then they also need to believe that they are worthy of sharing their stories. Like they have a voice that deserves to be heard. They have a message that deserves to be heard. So they need to believe that there is someone out there that needs to hear what they have to say. And Mm -hmm. that is why they should take that next step and get that message out there. So that's the ideal state of mind. That's all of the things we need them to believe and feel and all of that. So now that you've identified, okay, where they currently are Mm -hmm. and then where you want them to be, 
what you have to do then is just create the content that's going to help them adopt those new thoughts and beliefs we've just mapped out, right? Okay. So I really, really want you to think of your pre-launch content as like this vehicle or this bus that's going to guide them from this place where they are really hesitant and doubtful and skeptical to this place where they are empowered to take the next step, where they do believe that this next step you're offering is right for them and is worthy of the investment. I love that so much. And you have a framework to go along this, right? Yes. Yes. Because I think when I, usually when I lay out the strategy, everyone's like, yeah, cool. But then like, oh, oh my God, like I've got to create all of this content. (laughs) (laughs) Like how do I, like, yes, I get that the content is going to guide them but like what exactly do I write it feels overwhelming Mm -hmm. and I really want to say like the goal here is not to add a bunch more things onto your plate like create more content right and it's not to overwhelm you it's not to like make you feel like there's so much to do like really what I found is that so long as your content has these five pivotal objectives it's it's going to help guide the audience and to help you understand what those objectives are I created my signature power framework that I'd love to walk you all through so essentially yes to power up your pre-launch you need to your content needs to prime your audience overcome your objections walk through the why behind your offer establish your authority and reshift the audience's beliefs. Now, we don't we don't have a visual of the framework, but if you think of it as like a circle, and these are basically everything I just listed out are all of the things you need to be doing on repeat in the lead up to your launch. Um, and you know, we can definitely go so much further into into breaking it down, but those are you know the five key objectives. Oh, I love it. Um Can I ask it, like, this might sound like a a dumb question, but I was just thinking this, Um, can can you do this even when you're not in a launch period? Meaning, let's say you want to always have people be aware of your services and treat it like, treat your services like launch, even though you may know as a business owner, oh, this, this service is always available to everybody at all times of the year, but is this possible to apply this framework to a service that you are um, maybe wanting to treat as a launch? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does 100%. And yes, I I have definitely applied the power framework to a service, right? So uh, you can apply it if you are about to launch a new service, or you can even refer to the same principles to promote an existing service that is always open. Because if you think about it, all it is, all the power framework is, It's just about getting your audience to that right state of mind where they feel like empowered and ready to take that next step with you, whatever that is, whether that's a course, a four-figure service, whatever. Gotcha. I was just thinking this, especially for my listeners who many are service-based business owners, you may not yet have a digital course or Mm. you may only be, you feel like like, well, I, I just am a wedding photographer. I'm a graphic designer. I do this, but, um, I was just thinking that about the comparing it to that feast or famine cycle that a lot of creatives Mm. face, like there's this busyness that happens, this feast that happens in certain seasons of your business. And of course, like your schedule is full during the feast, but then like that famine month is like two months down the line and you don't want to think about it or you're, you're forgetting about that. And then when that happens, you are stressed out. So maybe like you can start incorporating this power framework to fill up your client roster two, three, four months down the line. Like, even if you're biz, like so full right now, I want you to strategically think like, how can I use this framework in my advantage to market myself and get people primed to book me two, Mm. three, four months down the line. Yeah, 100%. I love that you brought it up because it's a very relatable, very relatable situation. And it is like the power framework, the things I'm talking about today can also be applied to a service. So if you think about, okay, what is that ideal state of mind for my prospect to want to invest in my service? Like maybe Mm -hmm. for example, 
if you are like um, a systems and automations person, it's like, okay, what, what will make someone want to invest in their systems? Okay. They have to believe that systems are the backbone of their entire business, right? Mm -hmm. They have to believe that systems is what keeps your business running so that you can go on holidays or be sick and be okay and things like that. And maybe you might need to address a misconception that they have that creative people don't need systems, like all those things like that. So once you've identified the ideal state of mind, then you can use the power framework to start creating the content that's going to help them believe those things. I love that. And yeah, let's just like dive into priming your audience then, because I know you have a lot of notes about this and I am so excited about you sharing this. Yeah, of course. So the first element of the power framework is priming your audience. And all that is, is essentially like keeping your topic of your course or your service top of mind for your audience. So with the systems and automation example, you want to be creating content about systems and automations so that your audience are thinking about that by the time you launch or they're thinking about that in relation to you. If you're launching um, a podcast course, start talking about, you know, the benefits of having a podcast. Like if you're launching something about uh, a product on how to collect better testimonials, start talking about the importance of testimonials. And again, all of this is so that by the time you open the doors, they're already thinking about it. It's already front of mind for them. So when they see your course announcement or whatever, they're like, oh, that's exactly, you know, what I need. And to help them get to that, like, that's exactly what I need point. Your content should be doing things like um, drumming up desire for it. So why should they invest in systems? Like what are the benefits of having systems? So what are the benefits of having a podcast? But then you also want to make them, aware of the challenge right like Mm -hmm. there's clearly a reason why they are not why they haven't implemented a system yet or why they haven't created the podcast of their dreams yet right so you really want to be um conveying the challenges and saying things like oh this is why your podcast isn't taking off yet or this is why your systems keep breaking or whatever it is and then crucially you then want to be seeding the solution so your content in your pre-launch needs to be talking about what your unique approach to the solution is, what you've done to solve the problem for yourself and for others so that your audience will want to learn from you and understand that you have the solution, um, which again will make them want to check out your course. So that's, so that's priming your audience in a nutshell. And so you can like weave in correct me if I'm wrong, you you can like in the same content piece, can you do this drumming up of the desire and like conveying the challenges and seeding Mm. your solution? Can you, is that, is this something that you teach your clients to do or do you have them like break it apart? I'm just curious. No, that's a really, really great question. I'm so glad you brought it up because yes, like you can have like one email for or one content piece, like an email, a blog post, an Instagram post, that hits all of those things I talk about, right? So you can either use it as a way to um, prompt your your brain for like content ideas, like, okay, like I need to drum up desire, or you can have one content piece that achieves the whole thing. So you might start off your email being like, I went, I like, I went on holiday, but I was, my business was still, you know, running in the background, all thanks to my system. So right there, you're drumming up desire, but then you're like, you know, most people, most of my clients aren't at this stage yet because they don't have a strategy for their systems. They don't understand how their tech works. They don't understand why they need it. So right there, you're conveying the challenge, Mm -hmm. but then you might be like, but thanks to my unique framework or whatever it is, or like, thanks to the workflow I've set up for myself, or thanks to my unique framework, or thanks to the strategy that I have, I'm able to, you know, create systems in less than a day or whatever it is that allow my clients and my businesses to keep working on like working on autopilot. So that was a very rough example, but see how like the one email. I put you on the spot. So that's why. (laughs) But yeah, see how that one email achieved 
so many of the like you primed your audience to start thinking about systems but then you've also achieved the sub objectives of like i want that but oh yeah i have all those problems oh it looks like so and so has the solution so better stay on her email list (laughs) or like better sign up to her wait list so yeah so that is priming your audience in a nutshell I love that example so much. And so that kind of like weaves into then helping like your audience overcome those objections, which is the next um, letter in your framework. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is, like you said, overcoming objections. And no matter like what you're selling, there your your audience are going to have objections, right? It's just Mm -hmm. a very, very natural part of the decision-making process to have questions, be a little bit skeptical, be hesitant. And I think the ones that we commonly understand and face are things like cost. So like, oh my God, the cost of the service is too high right now, or the cost of the product is too high. Or another one is like time, which Mm -hmm. is more so for courses. Like I don't have time to do a course. Like I don't have time to be in a group program. So those two objections are highlighted cost and time are objections that you are usually tackling within the open cart period. But in the pre-launch, what you need to do is tackle objections towards the topic of your course or service. So what are the doubts that are stopping people from wanting to learn more about the actual topic itself? So again, if we use the systems one, I know a very common uh, objection or misconception towards the idea of implementing systems is I'm a creative. I don't need systems. Mm-hmm. Right. Or I'm too but, dumb. Like I'm so creative. My yeah. I'm too, I'm too dumb. Like I don't want to be held down by systems. I just, yeah. Want to go yeah. To flow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a very common. I don't want to be restricted. Uh-huh. I just <laughs> I want to be like, confined. I wanna, exactly. I want to do it the artistic way of like, like be being, free. yeah, being free. Like, I'm like, I've heard this all like, and I am the same way. I don't want to be restricted either, but it's hard to explain how freeing it is to have systems in place. Like I literally have more freedom in my life because mm, exactly right. But look, but like we said, so that's the objection people have. So yeah. obviously if they believe that they're going to be less likely to pay like three or four figures for someone to come in and create systems for them, or they're going to be far less likely to buy a course about systems. So that's why your content needs to acknowledge those objections or that belief and then explain what you actually believe. So you said it really well, Dolly, like systems is what gives you more freedom. Like that could be a post in and of itself. And that's you like overcoming or ad- addressing that objection but the main point I want to point out here is that like that's what you're doing in the pre-launch so you're not necessarily tackling like how long it takes to do a course mm-hmm. but what you are tackling is what is the hesitation stopping them from wanting to learn or commit to my topic gotcha and then you will most likely tackle those like the price and the time during yeah. the launch period, I'm guessing. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. So then during the launch, you'll, you would then obviously tackle like the investment objection, the time it takes. But in order to even like get them to the point where they're thinking about, oh, I want to learn this course, but it's too long or it's too expensive. You need to address like why they should be learning about it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Or, or better yet, like it will be easier to overcome those objections when they're already sold on Mm -hmm. the initial idea of why they should learn about it or have it in the first place. I love it. Yeah. So that's. Ash, I'm like learning so much from you. And like, I know you like you, like you've gone through so much, let, um, do you mind, um, sharing just a little bit more before? Cause I know like we have gone for almost an hour now and I don't want to take up too much of your time, but this is an amazing conversation. Yeah, yeah. So I'll um, quickly go through the last few bits of the framework so you have everything you need to create your content. But essentially, after overcoming your objections, you want to walk through your why. And this is essentially talking about like why you created your product in the first place, because you really want people to connect with, you know, like your mission and your purpose, because that is why they'll want to learn from you over Mm -hmm. anyone else, right? So you'd want to be thinking or creating content about like, yeah, what inspired you to create this offer or service? Like what gap in the market were you filling or what is the wider impact you're hoping to make? So that's walk through your why. And then 
after that is establish your expertise, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? It's establishing mm-hmm. your credibility early on so that people know that what you're teaching and what you're offering actually works. And this you can do this by like sharing case studies, testimonials, and all of that. And then finally, there is reshift beliefs. And it's pretty much what I've been talking about the whole time. But essentially, what you want your content to be doing is acknowledging the current beliefs that your prospect has, and then kind of helping them adopt a different point of view. So it could be like, oh, uh, I'm too dumb for systems might be a belief that they have. But then you say like, your content might say no one is too dumb for systems or you don't have to be smart to have systems or whatever it is that you believe. But that is essentially the power framework in a nutshell. And you can find all of that recapped in the free guide in the show notes. Yeah, I will link that in the show notes. I'm so excited for people to get their hands on this free. I mean, like this has been a masterclass in itself. So like you all like pay Ash, just send her money after this. Like, this is so good. Um, okay. So let's talk about, okay. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask, ask this because this is something that I know we talked about objections, addressing objections during a pre-launch phase and during launch phase. And, um, we now know how to like actually research those objections, but can you like, really quickly go over the difference between pre-launch content and then launch content. Cause there are very, like, those are two different types of content. And even I, myself, Mm. I can get like stuck in, in the, the weeds of these two and I want to do them so perfectly. And then I get stuck or perfectionistic tendencies or whatever, or sometimes some people just don't know like they get stuck and then they don't move forward. So what, how can you help a listener get unstuck in differentiating these two types of contents? Well, I first want to like acknowledge that. Yes. I think the reason you get so stuck is because there are a lot of similarities because Mm -hmm. if you've ever launched something before or marketed something before, you'd probably recognize a lot of the principles I'm talking about because you do that for your actual launch. Mm -hmm. All pre-launch is, is essentially like starting that process earlier before you've launched so that by the time you do launch they're already ready and you can spend like less time essentially doing the heavy lifting Lifting. so yes there are similarities but here are the three main differences I like to highlight so the main the first one is like the purpose right so during the launch your purpose is obviously to make sales Um, and to do that you want to keep your product or your course top of mind so you're continuously right state of mind that you were mentioning well yeah the launch is about keeping the course top of mind so reminding them you have a course whereas the pre-launch is about getting them to that right state of mind yeah exactly like what you said yeah so it's about getting them to that right state of mind by using things like the power framework the second main difference that we kind of addressed is the type of objections you're tackling. So during the launch, you're tackling objections related to the course itself. So things like the course costs too much, or it's going to take me too much time to do a course, or I don't like group programs or PDFs or whatever it is you're selling. Whereas in the pre-launch, you're tackling objections, stopping them from committing to the topic. So it's like, I don't have time to start a podcast versus I don't have time to do a podcast course. Like see the difference? Yes. Yeah. And then the last one is your call to actions. So during the launch, the call to action is very obvious, which is buy my thing or hire me or potentially ask a question if you're confused about buying the thing. So you just want to close the sale, but the pre-launch, you can't necessarily do that yet because your, your course isn't open. But what you can do is, number one, ask people to join a wait list to signify mm-hmm. their interest and or ask them to really engage with your content and reflect on it so that they are, you know, adopting those new beliefs that they you want them to have. So those are the three main differences. I love it. Thank you for breaking it down even more like that was so helpful. And Ash, I like truly mean this, like I've learned so much from 
talking with you, engaging with you. And I'm really, really excited for my audience to learn from this episode. And um, like y'all, I am dropping a more hints to you that Ash is going to be a part of the systems and workflow magic bundle, the 4.0 edition. And this is the launch edition. So do you love how like we are, I'm just breaking it down. We're priming you. We are trying to get you <laughs> excited about the importance of launching. Do you, do you just love how I'm like, so, so to the point of meta. Time. Yeah. So meta, <laughs> like we are, we are getting below the surface, but I want to convey to everyone, like, I am bringing on all of these experts to showcase like there are different elements there are different puzzle pieces and systems to launching that you really need to um, dive into and uncover. And Ash has like this incredible take on, I mean, through her power framework and through the pre-launch strategy. And so I'm really excited, Ash, about you sharing. Again, this is us like, hey guys, like this is going to be a part of the bundle. Like Ash, do you mind just kind of like teasing out what you are going to be um contributing to the launch bundle. Absolutely. So it'll come to no surprise that I'll be contributing a product called the pre-launch power primer, which is <laughs> a mini course walking you through exactly how to create your own profitable pre-launch strategy to ensure that your audience is primed and ready to buy your course. Now it's going to help you get really crystal clear on how you can apply the principles I talked about to identify the pivotal topics for your pre-launch so you're not wasting time creating other content that doesn't prime your audience um how to determine you know the ideal length of your pre-launch runway and also how to apply the power framework to your own offers whether that is a course or you can also apply it to a service so um that is what I'm super excited to contribute I am so excited that you are going to be doing this. And I love that you brought up how to apply this to a service as well. Because again, shout out to all the OG listeners of um, the podcast. Um, I know a lot of you listeners don't yet have digital courses yet. You are service-based business owners. So yes, this applies to you still. And I want you to know like you can prime your clients and your future customers like throughout the year and have, and like apply it to your marketing strategy as well so that you can fill up those spots and you don't have to experience the feast and famine. Like I really don't want you to experience this like in the upcoming months. So definitely check it out. And if you want to, um, like meet Ash, Ash, how can people connect with you, find you work with you? Tell us all the things. Yes, definitely. I'd love to hear from you after this. So if you'd love to connect, I hang out on Instagram at, at it's Ash Chow. Um, and you can also find me on my website at www.ashchow.com. And there should be a link below to download my free guide and join my email list where I like to send out lots of personal essays about launching and wrestling with the feelings when it comes to launching and all the human emotional side. So definitely come check it out. Yes. I love that you share that you, sh um, um, shared the re real raw emotions of like launching and all the feelings that go into it. Cause the feelings are real. And like, I'm like, Sorry, real. wow, I didn't realize I was, I still have these middle school girl emotions about yeah. launching. It's just <laughs> like, wow. That's like the way I name it. And like, you, you might name it something else, but I'm like, wow, like I haven't experienced this much of a roller coaster with my emotions since middle school. And I'm like, and it, it, it's normally during a launch phase. So, um, you all get on her email list. She'll, she'll walk you through, like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ash. And thank you everyone for joining us either on the podcast or on the beautiful gorgeous YouTube channel. I know you all are laughing because I'm still, I'm still working out the production part, but you all, the fact is you, you showed up, you're watching it, you're consuming it. And that means a lot to me. And I just, I'm thrilled that you listened all the way through or watched all the way through. And if you learned something from this episode, then I strongly want to encourage you to invite a business friend to consume it and learn from this as well and subscribe and follow and, um, leave a five-star review. If you haven't yet, um, 
And again, this series that we are in is all centered around the power of strategic launching. Because again, I want you, even if you don't have a digital product, I want you to learn how to launch your services and how to get out of the, that like feast or famine cycle so that you can apply these strategies to your marketing strategies and like the next quarter, the next two quarters, whatever. So I just really want you to be more confident on the back end of your business. Okay. So until then have an extremely streamlined and magical week. You amazing muggle you. I'm so glad you, you stay till the end and Ash, thank you for coming. And until then I will talk to you all next week. Bye. Hey.